We're going to wait just a minute. We've got the Foley High School Chamber Choir here. They just arrived, and they're going to sing the national anthem for us in just a few minutes. So we may be live and on the air, so somebody, Tony, would you sing something? <laughs> while we, well, I was afraid he would. So that's, no. We're going to wait uh, just a minute. That just We'll be right back. We're glad we have a quorum tonight. We have one out, but we do have a quorum, so we'll get started in just a minute. There, they'll be right here. Everybody good? Look good. Are you are you all together? You ready? I'll introduce you in just a minute. So just you're good. All right. One more. All right, we are a couple of minutes late. It's 5.32. Uh, we do have a quorum, so I will now call this regular monthly meeting of the Baldwin County Board of Education to order. This is the March 16th, 2023 board meeting. First, I'm going to call on Mr. Myrick if you would have our invocation. Tom? Sure. Uh, Father, we're so thankful for the blessings of this day. So thankful that uh, everything you do for us, Lord, we just ask that you continue to watch over our students, our, our employees. We pray for that protected dome. Father, that they could be over them and keep them safe. And we give you all the praise and glory for keeping us safe. We just ask that everything we do tonight in this meeting, we bring praise to your kingdom. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. We have a special treat tonight. I will ask you to stand as our choir, the chamber choir from Foley High School, comes to sing the national anthem. First, we join me in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the national anthem. Welcome. All are here. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing for the national anthem. Oh, oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Foley. 
Shelby High School Chamber Choir. Great job. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> I think we're going to hear from Dr. Brown in just a few minutes. We'll call on you, Dr. Brown, to come and speak to us. Ms. Reddick, do we have a commendation tonight? Yes, sir. Dr. Brown is also driving the bus of students, so uh, he said he would keep his comments brief so to make the, sure that they get home at an early hour. <laughs> Um, tonight we do have a commendation. We'd like to say congratulations to Rebecca Johnson from Daphne Elementary School. She is the 2023 Alabama School Counselor of the Year. Now Rebecca may look a little familiar to you. She's been here with us a couple of times and is no stranger to awards. I'd like to welcome Patrice Davis, Prevention and Support Services Coordinator, up to join me for a few words. Good evening. I want to first say thank you for your continued support of our school counseling program. As with all things, it takes a village to be successful. And we are able to be successful because of your unwavering commitment to the 82 school counselors who are currently employed in the school system. I realize that some of these 82 school counselors are locally funded units. So that is a part of why I say thank you for your support. When I initially met Rebecca during the 2015-16 school year as a first year school counselor at J. Larry Newton Elementary School, I knew that she was destined for greatness. She, along with two other first year school counselors, helped me to change the trajectory of the school counseling program here in the Baldwin County school system. To date, our schools have won 12 Program of Distinction Awards from the Alabama School Counselor Association and 12 RAMP Awards from the American School Counselor Association, which is the most for any school system in the state of Alabama. But the focus is not so much on the number of awards that we have won. Instead, the focus is on the fact that these school counselors in these schools are committed to implementing a comprehensive school counseling program that meets the social, emotional, and academic needs of our students. They are helping to prepare our students for life after high school graduation. No doubt, the best is yet to come. Just this year, we have welcomed 17 new school counselors in our family, and I am anxiously awaiting to see what is on the horizon for each of these new counselors. I am confident, just as you will hear Rebecca say herself, that the best is yet to come because we are not done yet. We have only just begun. I am looking forward to traveling this journey of excellence with each of these school counselors. To Rebecca, congratulations and job well done on this momentous achievement of not only being the first elementary school counselor of the year from Baldwin County, but also being the first Alabama School Counselor of the Year from Baldwin County. What a journey these past eight, school, these past eight years have been. And I thank her for the memories. Congratulations. And to the board, thank you. Thank you, Patrice. Well said. Mr. Tyler, if you'll join us for a picture. Miss Lindsay is actually out tonight, um, ill, so she won't be here. And then, oh yes, we're taking a picture. Miss Battle, Miss Johnson. I think she's going to say. I think she's going to say. Get right up here. That's okay. Rebecca, get right back there. Yeah, that way. Okay, we're going back this way. Which way? Yeah. 
No, you stand oh. up. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Go ahead, Rebecca. I had the privilege of being up in Montgomery when she was handed that award, too. So. Thank you for being there. I don't want to take too much of your time, but I do want to thank the board for letting me speak with you this evening. The last time I was here, I gave thanks to those that supported me on my journey to become elementary school counselor of the year for the state of Alabama. From countywide layoffs to introducing myself to Mr. Tyler in a pair of roller skates and a pirate hat at J. Larry Newton, it has been a fantastically fun journey being a part of the Baldwin <coughs> County School family. But as Governor, Governor K. Ivey would say, folks, we are not done yet. We still have lots to do. Last month, I was able to speak and sit with U.S. Secretary Miguel Cordova. During our time together, he asked every school counselor winner to seek and investigate what our states are doing with the $1.8 million Bipartisan Safer Communities Act to support mental health and student, and student wellness. And with, all of that is a part of President Biden's health strategy to double the numbers of school counselors and social workers and other mental health professionals to our students. What Patrice Davis said is that Baldwin County is on the right track. We're going above and beyond what the state is doing for our students. A school's counselor's job is to maximize student success, promote access and equity to students. As members of the school leadership team, your school counselors are creating a school culture of success for all of our students. School counselors help students apply academic achievement strategies, manage emotions, apply interpersonal skills, plan for post-secondary options such as higher education, military, or the workforce. Appropriate duties include individual academic planning and goal setting, classroom lessons based on our state standards, short-term counseling referrals for long-term support, collaborate with families, teachers, parents, administrators, and our community for student success, advocacy and other student-focused meetings, data analysis to identify student issues, needs and challenges, and acting as systems of change agents to improve equity, access, achievement, and opportunities for all the students. We don't just work in isolation. We are a part of the big picture. We focus on the whole development of a child. We might be doing more than what people know that we're doing for our students. School counselors in Baldwin County design and deliver school counseling programs that are based to improve student outcomes. We are leading, advocating, and collaborating to promote equity and access to all students by connecting services to our school's academic mission and our school improvement plans. We uphold ethical and professional standards and promote the development of school counseling programs based on defining, delivering, managing, and assessments. This evening, I wanna share a little bit of data regarding the school counselors in Baldwin County. As of today, like Patrice said, more than 25% of our schools within our district have received both state and national recognitions for running comprehensive school counseling programs. 25% is huge. Our national recommendation for student to counselor ratio is 250 to one. Our state average is 475 to one. And at Daphne Elementary School, we are at 475 to one. We are on the right track. We need to stay the course. We appreciate what you are doing for our students in Baldwin County. The needs of the students are growing and the need for counselors are tremendous. So please continue to fund us the way that you are. If you're not aware, Daphne Elementary is the only pre-K through third grade school. And last year alone, I had conducted 12 suicide ideation assessments on students. But with the support of my administration and the support of the school board, we were able to get funding for a half counselor unit. And this year we've been, been able to decrease that number from 12 to just three. I envision a future where all our graduates in Baldwin County are proactively engaged lifelong learners and leaders. They use their strengths and talents to demonstrate resilience, achieve their potential, and ultimately live a life with countless opportunities. The individual that was responsible for the Lake Forest shooting last month was once a student at Daphne Elementary School. This is a reminder that folks, 
we still have a lot to do for the students in Baldwin County. Our counselors are proactive and preventative in nature. Had there been that other half counselor unit at that time when he was enrolled at our school, there may have been a different outcome. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, today our very survival depends on our ability to stay awake, to adjust to new ideas, and to remain vigilant in the face of challenge and change. So thank you for supporting and investing in the school counselors, and we will continue to work diligently for the students in Baldwin County. And as the 2023 Alabama School Counselor of the Year, I will continue to advocate for the role that we play in our schools and the duty we have to the students in Baldwin County, and more importantly, for the great state of Alabama. We are on the right path, folks, but we're not done yet. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. We appreciate that. We know how important uh, the counselor role is and the board supports uh, the number of counselors we have. It is evident, as Patrice said, and John Wilson knows the numbers. It's just like our nurses, uh, other things we do, we go above and beyond as a county funding where the state doesn't. So we're not going to let them hold us back. So again, congratulations. Patrice, thank you, too, and you have your family with you, and, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Absolutely. Our next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from February the 16th, 2023, regular meeting. Do I hear a motion? I have a motion uh, by Mr. Johnson, a second by Ms. Bradley. All in favor of approving the minutes? Say aye. aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Delegations. We've got several people lined up to speak tonight. First, I'll call on Nicole King. Are you you want to wait? Okay. All right. Perfect. So we'll get to you in a bit. Next, we have Dr. Lou Campanosi, and you know the rules. You get a minute and a half. <laughs> 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 Gee, you're generous tonight. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying. And you'll, yeah, I guess we're going to have the, not that it matters, Dr. Lou, but. It's going to be up there? It's going to be up there, and I have this, so go okay. ahead. Okay, just don't throw it at me. I won't, I won't do that, Dr. Okay. Lou. <laughs> uh, Dr. Lou Caponosi, President of the Common Sense Campaign. Appreciate your time and letting me speak tonight. Um, I've given the uh, board two handouts. One is the summary of your ALCAP uh, test results from math and ELA from 21, a comparison. I've done this before, so I'm not going to cover it. I just want to make sure everyone is on, you know, in the ballpark with that. Um, we have met with Do Dr. Carter to discuss all of these things, and I think she's on the right track to see where we're going with the math, especially um, for the next uh, ALCOP season, which I think you all begin testing soon, okay? Uh, the second thing I gave you is a handout about studies weekly. This was put together by Dr. Barry Nolan, who is part of the Common Sense Campaign South Baldwin team that's been working with Dr. Carter. I want to just make sure all of you all understand our position about this. The Studies Weekly is a woke group of people who are essentially inside, let's put it this way, they're inside the ring here when my understanding is the State Board of Education hasn't even approved the new contract, okay? So my argument here is, Mr. Tyler, I think you need to talk to, to Mr. Mackey about it, not only about the contract issue, but the, but the context of this, okay? And we've talked about it being woke. I'm not gonna, I don't have time to get into all of that. The bottom line is, I think, listen to what Dr. Uh, Dr. Carter said. We're pretty much on track to find other things, but her hands are tied until something happens at the State Board of Education. There are other issues in terms of using other alternatives, which they are doing. My argument there is, if you line up Studies Weekly along with Discovery, you may find that the learning objectives and the standards do not meet what is required. I think we ought to take a look at that. My last point about this, I think, look at that, Cecil. I'm go doing, moving doing right, great, right along. Luke. Okay, Keep it up. We recently had the State Board of Education approve a textbook for K through three. 
Our argument here basically, and this, the Studies Weekly is, is exactly the problem we're seeing with woke material getting put into the system. So if the State Board of Education takes Amplify, which evidently a professor from South Alabama who is all involved with the LGBTQ movement, is an activist, somehow Governor Ivey appoints this individual and what you have is a woke you know, document. My, f my feeling here is, is that you have the choice in this. They keep saying that you have the choice. Let's see what the board does here with this particular document and find out what, where you want to go with it. And then I would urge that we have a, a very broad section of the public be involved with that selection process. Thank you. And Cecil, you didn't throw anything at me. That's I very I good. Would. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Dr. Lou. Appreciate okay. that. Bye. Yeah, that's right. No. All right, thank you very much. Next, we have Dr. Chris Brown. We're excited to hear from you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here this evening. You may not be aware, but uh, March is Music in Our Schools Month, and so we celebrate that as well. I just wanted to mention to you a couple things. I've heard this comment, Dr. Brown, if it wasn't for your class, I wouldn't have even come to school today. Uh, I can't tell you how many times in the last three decades I've heard that comment about the music classes I've taught. I began to wonder why, realizing early on that it was not about me as their teacher or mentor, but more so about the power of the music itself and the community it builds among those sharing it. When I began teaching, most of the reasons we suspected music was important were anecdotal. There was not a lot of research yet to back up our observations about the things we were passionately teaching. Now there is substantial data to support what we suspected. I had the privilege of earning my PhD at a tier one research institution that had a reputation for producing valuable, pertinent data on the importance of music education from pre-birth children to aging adults. More and more research is available, which I won't cite in the context of this short time, that promotes these and other major concepts. Music, number one, music is socially important and teaches students about their society as well as others and prepares them for learning how to work alongside their peers to achieve common goals. It is one of the few subjects that builds connective regions of the brain, promoting cre uh, creativity, problem solving, and scaffolding of complex ideas like those in the areas of math, science, reading, and the languages. Music also builds self-esteem and fosters mental health which our post-COVID generation of children need more than ever. One of the most informative and relevant research papers I've come across recently detailed that even during COVID, students who were immersed in music education classes were nearly one academic year ahead of their non-music peers. Baldwin County has led our state in public education in multiple ways, yet we still have some elementary students that only have music once every seven to ten days, if at all. Not all the secondary schools offer music or other performing arts other than band. I believe it's time to begin reaching all the students in our county with strong music education programs that might include keyboard, guitar, choir, non-conventional bands like Foley's Los Amigos Mariachi Group, uh, music production classes and world music ensembles that will not only educate students presently but will prepare them socially mentally and neurologically for the future many districts look at music education as an expenditure that they can't afford but I'm telling you based on empirical research and for the sake of our children that it's an investment into their future and our society that we can't ignore thank you Thank you, Dr. Brown. Y'all are welcome to stay with us if you'd like to. <laughs> we appreciate you blessing us with the National Anthem. Thank y'all very much. Wonderful job. Make them take you by a restaurant now. All right, Mr. Tyler, do we have any amendments to the agenda? Yes, sir, we do. Amend number one, owner architect proposals. Number five, leave of absence of personnel. Number six, retirement and resignations of personnel. Number seven, transfer intent to transfer of personnel. Number eight, employment of personnel. 
Number nine, extra work for extended periods. Add number 11, non-renewal of principal contracts. Number 12, suspension of personnel unpaid. So I hear a motion to amend the agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Warner, a second from Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have a, a, amended the agenda. Mr. Tyler. Agenda item one, owner architect proposals. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the owner architect proposals for various projects as amended and stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Warner, a second from Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? I notice on here we still have a couple of these as sawgrass. Are we moving all the We are. That was put on there a little bit prematurely. Okay. But down here at the end of it, it's on, uh, there's two of them there. It gives the civil engineer, it has JDE. Some. And then on some of this, two of them, it has uh, sawgrass or something. Where is? It's, it's toward the end. Toward, okay. If, it was, it, if, if it's it referring to the new additions, if it's referring to the new additions or the new schools, then all that would remain. It's just the yeah. other, Okay, well, that's what I'm asking. Yes, it would just be the portion that we're putting yeah. next week so, or next month. What was put on here by accident, there's some survey work on our existing high schools tied into the you know athletic enhancements that we're working through. We're still kind of working through the scope of that, so that was put on that's there not, by mistake and inappropriately. That's, that's off, yes, sir. So all of this is just the, what it, we talked about? Yes, ma'am. Everything that was presented last month, yes, ma'am. Okay. We had, even though we own the property, like for, for Daphne Elementary, we still have to have a survey done for the state, making sure we're building on our property, even if we're building in the middle of it. So, I mean, that's just a procedure we have to do. We have to have yes. a site survey. I'll, I'll just make sure we, you know. Yes, sir. Good question. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item two, purchase of Chromebooks. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the purchase of 12,000 Chromebooks from Erie Jones in accordance with the Alabama Purchasing Cooperative for a total cost of $5,833,440, which includes 12,000 Lenovo 300E Generation 4 Chromebooks, three-year on-site and accidental damage protection plan, three-year battery replacement plan, installation fees, and the mandatory Google license is attached and stipulated in the agenda exhibit. A motion. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, a second by Mr. Myrick. Any discussion? I'm just going to bring up the point here. Do we have a warranty because um, you talked about the drills and how to email me? Oh, Mr. Johnson. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll just continue. Like, <laughs> so the warranties are because um, for, cause the factory warranty is just for like one year. It doesn't affect damage. And like right. That. So ac accidental damage is covered by this for the full three years. Okay. And then we, how are they going to be dispersed throughout the I have a spreadsheet. I can go over that. They're tentative. Um, it goes over 42 of the 45 schools, but it's based on age and, and the um, usability of the current Chromebooks. Okay. Would you like me to send you that spreadsheet? Yes. yes. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item three, warranty deed. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the board president and superintendent to execute the attached warranty deed as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion. I have a motion by Mr. Johnson and a second by Ms. Kirby. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item four, agreement concerning use of facilities of the Board of Education as emergency mass care shelters. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the agreement as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Warner, a second by Mr. Myrick. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ten item five, leave of absence of personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the leave of absence of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. 
I have a motion by Mr. Johnson, a second by Ms. Kirby. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item six, retirement and resignations of personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the retirement and resignations of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Warner, a second by Ms. Bradley. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item seven, transfer intent to transfer personnel. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the transfer intent to transfer of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. I, I have a motion by Mr. Johnson. A I've already got you beat. Oh, you got Mr. Warner <laughs> has seconded that. Oh, Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item eight, employment of personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the employment of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. I have a motion by Ms. Kirby, a second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item nine, extra work for extended periods. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the extra work of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Warner, a second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 10, approval of settlement agreement. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to authorize and direct the superintendent and board president to execute and deliver the settlement agreement provided to the board under separate cover and to all actions and take all actions necessary in connection with their win, their with. I have a motion by Mr. Johnson, a second by Ms. Bradley. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 11, non-renewal of principal contract. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the non-renewal to non-renew the contract of the probationary and or contract principal mentioned herein in accordance with the Code of Alabama 1975, Section 16-24B-3, is provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Warner, a second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Opposed? <laughs> oh, no, no, anyone opposed? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 12, suspension of personnel unpaid. The superintendent recommends adoption of motion to approve unpaid suspensions of personnel as provided to board members under separate cover. We do need a motion and a second, folks, to go into executive session. We have two people that want to speak to this, but they would like to do that in, in executive session because the good name and character of someone will be, will be mentioned. So do I hear a motion? I make a motion to go into executive session. I have a motion by Mr. Myrick and a second by Ms. Kirby. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So we will go into executive session. Will we reconvene? We any idea about the time of this executive session? Well, y'all will have an opportunity to hear from them, and then y'all are allowed to deliberate with council, and then we'll come back out. So maybe 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. 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 So let's go into executive session. Thank y'all for being here. Congratulations to you. Patrice, great job. I love to hear you speak. Thank you.